Now let's take a look at how we would bring values in from a database. We do that with the product feature opcrecipe.net. First let's configure the data source. We're going to use Microsoft SQL Server and I'm going to use the SQL Server Management Studio. Here I'm using the free to use version that you can download from Microsoft.com called the SQL Server Express. The server name is going to be important for us later in order to connect to that database. For now we'll go ahead and connect into SQL Server. Under the databases object, we'll right click to create a new database. The database name we're going to use is called Recipes. We select OK and we'll now add a table to that recipe. If we right click on or double click on the databases and go to tables, right click on tables and select new table. Let's put in the column name value one and we'll set the data type to a float. We'll put value two also as a float and value three as a float type. We'll also add an additional column called lot number. We're going to use this to query what type of data, what record set is returned in order to write the values to the OPC system service. This is going to be a character field. We'll use the default 10 characters. We'll save that with the default of table underscore one. We're now ready to put in a few values into that table. So we can close the design view, double click on the tables, right click on table one, and now let's open that table. In value one, we're going to put in the value one, two, and three for values one, two, and three. For the lot number, we're going to use the letter A. For the second record set, we'll put in 101, 102, and 103 for the values, and the lot number as B. We now have our data source configured, so now we're ready to use the Configure Recipe selection using the Configure OPC Systems application. So if we go to Configure, recipes and we are going to select the local service to configure. We'll put in a recipe name of test. We'll make the recipe active. With the type of recipe that we're going to do we're going to use a single record type returned. The multiple record type allows you to put the tag names and the values in the database itself and that is where the mapping is done is what values are written to what particular tags. Here we're going to do the mapping in OPC systems and select a single record type. The execution type that we're going to do is going to be continuous. With event driven type you can have this come from a PLC and this is great for bringing down formulas uh, with full error confirmation and feedback available as we're seeing right here. With the continuous type, we'll set an execution rate of one second. The timeout we can leave at 60 seconds as the default. But we're going to check the option to write all values without feedback. This is the best way to write continuous values quickly without having to confirm that the values were sent all the way to the opcsystems.net tags. Um, using feedback is great if you're bringing values down to a PLC for different formulas. Under the Tags tab, we're going to map what tag names we're going to write to. 
to the field names from the database. So we'll select the local service to write to. We'll go down and select that VB app group and choose tag one value. Select OK and then the field name that we're going to read from is value one. That's the same field name we just put in SQL Server. We select OK. We'll go ahead and add the other two tags if we want to write to. If you wanted to set up a lot of tags in fields quickly, you can right click in the tag list and do a CSV import and export. Now we're ready to move over to the database tab. And as the provider, we're going to select SQL Server. For the server name, we need to obtain that from the SQL Server engine. That's very easy to use the SQL Server Management Studio. I'll disconnect from the server and now connect back. And in the first dialog that comes up, there is the server name that we want to read from. So we'll copy that and paste that into our server name field. The database that we called it was recipes. And the table was table underscore one. We're going to use Windows authentication, but you can also use SQL Server authentication if you want to connect to the database. The query string property is an optional property that you can use to determine what record you want to return from the table. We're going to demonstrate this with a few tags that automatically set the query string. Select Configure Tags, connect to the local service, and let's use the Add Tag selection to add a tag name called lot number. Next we'll add a second tag called query string. The first tag lot number we're going to change its data type to a string and we'll set the value to a capital A. In the query string tag, it is also going to be set up as a data type of string, but the data source we're going to set as a calculation. Let's put in this calculation. And this is going to be a query string that will be returned. It'll say where lot number equals and then we're going to concatenate the, the actual value of the lot number tag together. When we apply those changes you should then see the resultant value it says where lot number equals A. We're now ready to go back to the recipe configuration and under the query string property, we'll set the query string with tag and browse for the tag query string on the local service. We are now ready to add that recipe configuration to the OPC system service by selecting the add recipe configuration. It is now running continuously. Now let's go back to our Visual Studio application go back to the form view and add one more control to that form for entering what lot number we wish to return the data from. Let's go down and select an OPC controls text box. Drag that onto the form. Go to the properties dialog and set the text OPC systems tag property. We'll browse for a local tag and that tag is going to be lot number dot value. We'll click OK.
and we're now ready to run that application. Here we see the values that are currently being updated to the opcsystems.net tag from the OPC recipe feature. If we enter in a lot number of B, hit the enter key, we will see the values now being returned from the database, the record that contains the values 101, 102, and 103. If we go back to lot A, we'll see that the values change back to that. If we want to log values to a database, that's quite simple. If we go to Configure, Data Logging, select the local service, let's enter a logging group name of Test. We'll activate the logging. We'll set the continuous logging at a default rate of one second. You can log continuously down as fast as 10 microseconds if you'd like. Or with event driven logging, you can log as fast as 100 nanoseconds. Under the Tags tab, we'll de determine what values we want to log. If we select the Add Field button, we can then browse the local service. Let's log the values ramp value and the field name. We can leave that at the default of ramp underscore value and the data type as double float. Let's also log from the local service random value and sign value. In the database tab We'll enable to log to a database. We'll select SQL Server as the engine. And in the server name field, we'll enter in the server name of the SQL Server engine. In the database, we'll type in something new called test OPC and the table name as test. We'll use Windows authentication. When we select add, we are now logging values to the database. If the database didn't exist, it will automatically be created. So now let's go back to our SQL Server engine. We'll refresh our databases and we'll see we have a new database called Test OPC. If we go into the Tables object, right click and select Script Table As Select To New Query Editor. This is a way to query what values are in the database and we'll execute that query. We'll see we now have values being logged into that database. All of these configuration parameters can be programmatically set up as well as demonstrated in the VB.NET example. If we go to the program group opcsystems.net and then launch the example application we can take a look at configure recipes. We can return what recipe names are currently running in the recipe engine and we can return what parameters. We can also use configure CSV import and export. If you scroll down you can return the recipe configuration parameters as an array of objects. This is quite useful to set up multiple recipes using the CSV import feature. The same is true for the data logging configurations and the tag configurations that we just discussed earlier. So we can see how easy it is to bring in data from different data sources into the opcsystems.net real-time database. We've looked at how to bring in data from OPC servers, OPC clients, Visual Studio applications, and with this we can see the data sources are really endless because Microsoft Visual Studio is very compatible with lots of different data sources like XML files, Word, Excel, databases, and your own custom data as well. And we've seen how to bring data in using opcrecipe.net and turn around and log that back with the feature opcdatabase.net.